Hi, I'm Tim Shatney, and in this video course, I would like to teach you how to make your own Max for Life devices easily and intuitively. The whole video course I would like to make for free for all people who are interested in audio programming, maxing, and of course, for my dear friends and people who I love. Before we move on, I want to say that I'm not a native speaker in the English language, so I might do some mistakes. I'm sorry for that. Anyway, let's move on to Ableton and start creating things. This video course is a part of LearnSD project, which is an interactive web platform for learning sound design. You can do things like that there. Or like this. You can also follow our Max Life course on LearnSD website and get even more information about every lesson. The whole project is just starting. So it is really interesting to hear your opinion. You can write it in the comments to this video. You can see here I opened Ableton and actually in this media track I already have the result of this course. We have here a sequencer, then a chord generator, a simple frequency modulation synthesizer, which is MP compatible. Then we have a gain audio effect, delay, ping pong delay, a filter with resonance, and a beat crusher. And the whole system sounds like that. All these things you'll be able to build by yourself and on top of that, I'm sure that you'll be able to create your own things and realize your audio dreams. And let's go to the process of building Max for Life devices. Finally, I clear up this MIDI track, make things clean, clear, and then go to categories here on the left, press on Max for Life and see these three menus. Max audio effect, max instrument, and max media effect. These are three types of max for life devices which we are able to build. And in this first part of the course, we will start from building max audio effects. Because I think this is quite easy to do right in the beginning when you have no programming knowledge, nothing, and you want just to get started. So we open this max audio effect menu and double click on the first thing here, which is also called max audio effect. And we see here it created for us a template for building our audio effect. If, for example, I move now this audio effect somewhere on another track, this third audio track, and drop some sample on it, play it back with this max audio effect, and without this audio effect, then we see, and it's better to say here, that no changes, no processing happens with the sound. And that's good, that's how it should be, because this is just a template to build your things. And in this state it just passes signal through without any modification. But when we want to do some modification on sound, some processing, we of course need to change something inside of this audio effect. And to do this thing we just press on the edit button here, and it opens for us this window. It might take some time for you, because it actually opens an additional program, which is called Max. This program actually contains the whole programming Max language, on basis of which we would build any kind of Max Relay device. And if you know this language, then creating these effects would be very easy. If not, it's also not a problem, because in this course, we would go through all the basic things which you would need to know to create things in Max for Life domain and build things there. What we have here? What's this window? <laughs> this window is called patch. And this is where you do your coding. The coding contains of different objects which are connected somehow. So these boxes are objects and the connections are called patch cords. We have a patch, 
object and patch cord. Three main things which you need to know. And these two objects are actually received and sent back to Ableton Audio. And if we break, for example, this connection, then we disconnect the left input channel with left output channel inside of our max audio effect. In this state, if we save max audio effect under some kind of name and close it, then playing back now this audio track would give us this result when we don't hear any more the left channel. Because we broke the connection and the signal doesn't pass through anymore through this left channel. The same would work of course for the right channel. But that's not what we want to do usually in audio effect. We want to do some interesting processing on audio. And we go back to editing mode, open our patch. Let's create back this connection. and we create our first object to modify audio. To create an object inside of a patch, you would need to press here or press N on your keyboard. And then you need to type the right name of the object which you want to create inside of this box which now appeared on my screen. So I want to create actually a low res object which is a resonant low pass filter. Just like that. It has a tilde sign in the end. And all these objects which work with audio would always have a tilde in the end. This kind of a sign which tells you that I am working with sound. And now we can put this object in between, for example, connection of left input and left output channel. So we just do like that, drag this object a little bit to the left. So it's beautiful. And then connect the output of our low pass filter to the input of plug out. So which would send the audio to the output channel one. And the same, of course, we have a stereo signal. The same we would need to do for the right channel overall. So we need to create the copy of this object. We could do just copy paste. Also works with control C, control V or command C, command V if you work on Mac. And then you just insert again here this object. Now we just save this thing, close the patch, and we hear now that we have a very obvious low pass filtering. And of course, that's not the end now because we don't know what's cutoff frequency, which resonance there, what's happening. It's just some initial setting of this object which influences audio. Well, we can actually specify things with help of arguments inside of objects. I would like to move a little bit to the right this part. And then I want to double click on an object and do a space now after the name of it. And then see that we have now possibility to write two arguments, a cutoff and resonance for our low pass resonant filter. So cutoff, it's clear. It should be some frequency value, for example, 3000. But resonance is always different. And be really careful when we work with digital filters. Even when you don't know what would come out from your patch, I would recommend you to take off your headphones, put them on the table and just listen in this state like that and if you don't hear that your headphones screaming with some audio and probably it's all right and you can back put back your headphones and listen further your patch test it and so on but i would recommend right in the beginning when you do some things in max not to to work really with headphones and not to work with very expensive gear like expensive speakers because they might be damaged after some super loud sound and most importantly you need to take care of your ears because this is your main instrument so coming back to resonance we can see here if we press on this kind of help menu that we have a resonance which should be between 0 and 1 and default value is 0 here it's written so kind of no resonance and 1 would me would mean super sharp strong resonance and we don't want 
this kind of strong resonance, we want something in between. So probably you can write 0 0.5, just like that. We can do the same thing for the second one. 3000, 0 0.5, good. Now I just click somewhere outside of the object to save the modification here and save the patch, close it, go back to Ableton and hear that it, it actually works, which is great. That's what we want. We created our first Max for Life audio effect, super easy, super fast. And now one more thing which we don't have here and it's quite essential, which you probably want to have is some control. Some control, like a knob on a filter to change its cutoff or resonance. And uh, we obviously need here to create some GUI object, user interface object. And there's a whole library of objects which are compatible with Ableton. You can find this library here, this library of objects. They always start with live dot, for example, live dot dial. And it creates such a thing which is like a knob, classic Ableton knob. So when I created this live dial, I can only drag it around and do nothing with it. So I can control really how it works and see which scale, for example, it has and so on. To change this, I can actually lock our patch right here or press command E or control E. And then I can change the knob. And it works now in scale between 0 and 127, which is like a classic MIDI scale. Well, that's not exactly what we want, because here we have a possibility to change frequency, which is somewhere between 20 and 20,000 probably. And the second argument which we have here for filter is resonance, which is usually set between 0 and 1. So we need to have two controls, which, you have, which would have those scales for changing those parameters. And hopefully for us, those UI objects have already some things which are prepared for us. So if we hover over this left side of an object, left border of it, we can see this button, we press on it and we see this menu. We go to prototypes and we press here on Frick. So now we have a control which is made for controlling the frequency and it's perfect for our filters. That's exactly what we want. So now, we just need to connect this user interface object with second input of our filter, which exactly is created for controlling the cutoff frequency. So we could also not specify it as an argument, but create just some um, user interface object and con control this parameter just like that. Boom. And we can see here one more thing. This cable is a different color. It's gray. And this cable is black and yellow. Why it's like this? This is because in uh, Max and this programming language, you have different data types which, with which you can work. And uh, different domains in which you can work. When you have cables like black and yellow, it means that those cables transfer audio signals. And the gray cables means they transfer messages. And in the next lesson, we will talk more detailed about this kind of separation between signals and messages. But for now, just you can see that sometimes we don't need a signal to control some parameters, for example, in a filter. It's just enough to have a message. And that's exactly what this UI object does for us. So I do the same for the second filter. And now, finally, we have a possibility to control the cutoff frequency of the filter. Let's test it. Save, close open Ableton again, play it back, and let's change this frequency control. As easy as that. And uh, finally, let's create the last control, which would change the resonance. Okay, we could create once more live dial. I could press on L on my keyboard and then write dial. And then go to prototypes menu again and find the Q prototype. Be careful, don't use this prototype straight away because as you can see, when I lock the patcher, it works on scale from 0 0.1 to 10, which is not what we want. 
be careful really it can be really loud so let's change the scale of an object and to do this i want to introduce to you the new menu which is called inspector so we click on our ui object we click on this button and it opens for us the huge menu to modify our object to change its behavior and here in this part we can see that we can change its range so now it's from 0 0.1 to 10 we want to change it for example from 0 to 1 bam i press enter i can close inspector and then we just connect like that to the resonance input on filters this ui object i save it now let's maybe not save it when it's one because it could be very resonant close it and then let's change parameters and hear what happens So when we come closer with resonance to one, it becomes quite picky and strong. So we need to be careful here, but it's still in, in the range of our control, which is very good. And even when we right click on any of those UI objects, we can show automation and automate them as you do. It always enables them just like here, bam, and you have this effect now. So congratulations, we built our first Max for Life device. We learned how to create it. We learned how Max works, what is a patch, what are objects, what are patch cords which connect those objects. And in the next lesson, we would continue our journey. We would see the new UI objects, new objects which can process audio and have even more fun. Thank you for watching and we would see us in the next video. Bye bye.